Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Rock Solid Live. It is Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. And I don't know about where you are, but here in Calico Rock, Arkansas, it is a dreary, rainy day. But it is still a good day. And we are glad that you're watching, whether it's Facebook Live or on YouTube. Um, this is just an opportunity to bring you God's Word and to just have a time where we fellowship, worship, uh, and through this opportunity. So we are continuing our series talking about different things related to faith. And tonight we're going to talk about something maybe we don't talk about a whole lot, but man, it's so important. It's kind of a, a biblical term, a churchy term, but we're really going to kind of lay it out tonight, hopefully in a way that we can all understand. And that is the, su the sufficiency of Christ. Now, what does that mean, the sufficiency of Christ? Well, very simply... It means knowing that Jesus Christ is enough. Now that might sound complex, but the truth is each and every one of us, we go through life and we struggle with all kinds of different things. One of the things that we struggle with is being content in this life. Now, when I say content, you know, sometimes it's hard to count our blessings because we're too busy looking all around us. And instead of being thankful for what we have, we're just thinking about what we don't have. So we have a lot of verses I want to talk about in Philippians. Philippians is a great book in the New Testament, a letter from Paul. I know we've been studying a lot about the letters of Paul recently. But first, I want to go back to the Old Testament, and I want to look at Exodus, because you know God, he is... Building a nation in Exodus, he's building a nation for his people, and as he's doing this, he gives them the Ten Commandments. Now, these Ten Commandments are so important because these were the Ten Laws that they needed to understand more than anything. And most of these Ten Commandments, you and I can probably recite. I might not be able to get all ten of them, but I can get most of them. But what I want to talk about here is the very last one. So. If you're following along in your Bible or your Bible app, uh, Exodus chapter 20, if you look at verse 17, the very last of the Ten Commandments, it says, Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, you might say, what in the world does that mean, do not covet? Well, basically, what that means is you should not desire what another person has. Now, that goes back to, are you content? Are you content with what you have? Are you content with what God has blessed you with? Are you content at what you have made of your life? Or are you so jealous, so envious of everyone around you, of trying to keep up with the Joneses, that instead of having joy and happiness in your life, you are simply filled with anger and envy and jealousy. Now, here's why we want to focus on this tonight. Because I see this in children. I see this in teenagers. I see this in young adults. And I see it in older adults. Everyone goes through this problem. And that is this. Being content. I've struggled with it. I mean, I've looked around before and said, man, if, if I had what that person had, I'd be happy. If I just had that house, if I just had that vehicle, if I just had that stuff, if I just had the family that he had or she had, then I'll have everything. But the truth is, if all we want is a possession or a person to make us happy, then basically we're hoping that the green grass across the road is going to be everything that we need. But guess what? It's not. If all we're looking for is for something to fix us, we're never going to be fully content. And that is why we see here in the book of Philippians, in the New Testament, and man, Paul is talking about so many powerful things. We want to focus on chapter 4, but before we get to Philippians chapter 4, we have to look at Philippians chapter 3 just for a moment. And I want you to go to verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 7. Philippians is a beautiful book because the Apostle Paul, the missionary, is in prison. He is going through a situation where he is in prison. He does not have his freedom. 
and yet he is writing to the church and he is so thankful for them ministering to him and loving him and doing everything that they're doing. And man, this is just such a beautiful book. But verse seven says, but everything that was a gain to me, I've considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and considered them as dung so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Now that is huge. Because if you understand those verses, here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, everything that I had before salvation, everything that I had before I knew Jesus, it's no longer important to me. Because now I know Jesus. Now I'm a new creature. Now I have been set free. I've been found. And because of that, the only thing that matters is Jesus. Paul understands that what he needs more than anything is the sufficiency of Christ. doesn't matter the situations. It doesn't matter the stuff. It doesn't matter the prestige. It doesn't matter the titles. What Paul needed more than anything was that purpose that Jesus Christ gave him. It was that peace that surpasses all understanding. And it was the faith, the joy that Paul only had because of Jesus Christ. Paul is in prison when he's writing this. And yet Paul understands, listen, I don't regret anything. I don't regret being a missionary. I don't regret preaching the gospel. I don't regret anything I've done because I have faith in Jesus Christ. I know the creator. I have a relationship with the most powerful, beautiful creator there is. This is such an important lesson because I know right now, you know, we're going through a situation where life is different. You know, today on the show, we always do the, the broadcast at 2 p.m. with Brother Kevin Bishop, our pastor, and myself, where we we do the regular sermon, and we also do some interviews. And today on the show, we interviewed two of our seniors here at First Baptist Calico Rock, uh, Anna Kirby and Joseph Grigg. And, you know, of course, we talked about, you know, their senior year and, you know, how did this, you know, pandemic affect them and what do they miss about school? And, you know, if we look at everything that has happened in our lives and how our daily lives have changed, I mean, it's crazy, right? I mean, at the beginning of the year, no one could expect where we would be here in May. But yet, here we are. And yet, with everything going on, with, with, with all the ups and the downs, and this lesson is so important because we need to understand, even if we lose so much, even if we're going through those situations, we still can have peace we can still have that sufficiency in Jesus Christ. Let's go to chapter four. And this is really the, the main event, if you will. This is the, the main course for tonight's lesson. If you look at chapter four here, let's read verses 10 through 14. And we're going to focus in a couple of verses within. But let's look at the whole section here. Uh, chapter four, Philippians, beginning of verse 10. It says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly, because once again you renewed your care for me. You were in fact concerned about me, but lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with little, and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Still, you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. There is so much in those verses. The first thing I want to say here is, you know, within that verse, within those series of verses, is probably one of the most notable verses in the Bible. That is Philippians 4.13. Uh, Philippians 4.13 is the, the very first Bible verse I ever learned uh, I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. 
And the truth is, and the reason I read that all together is because sometimes we can take a verse out of context. And I've heard that verse so many times and people say, man, you know, this means that basically, you know, it doesn't matter what anyone else wants. I can do whatever I want to do and God's going to give me the strength. Well, that's not what the verse is saying. If you read the verse in context, if you understand what Paul is saying, he's saying, listen, I'm in prison. I have lost my freedom. But yet, even when I have nothing, I am content. When I have a lot to eat, when I have nothing to eat, I have found, read it here, that I am in content because a secret is Jesus. Look at this here. Start again out of verse 11. I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with little and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. What is Paul saying? He's saying, listen, it doesn't matter the hardships you're going through. It doesn't matter the problems you're going through. If you understand that your focus is on Jesus and that Jesus Christ is enough, then he will give you the strength to go through anything you could, that happens. There is no valley too deep. There is no valley too low. What Paul is saying in these verses is, listen, yes, I'm in prison. Yes, I've gone through shipwrecks. I've gone through being snake bit. I've gone through almost being killed. But the reason I hang on to my faith is because I know that Jesus Christ is giving me the strength for me to hold on and to keep on keeping on. And no matter the ups and the downs, he is enough. Church, what that is saying is it doesn't matter what we're going through. Yes, Jesus cares. Jesus wants to hear a prayer request. But even when we're going through the valley, even when we're going through the hard times, Jesus is enough. Sometimes in our relationship with Jesus, now I can't speak for you, but in my own life, and sometimes we get discouraged, Amen. Sometimes things get so hard and we say, you know what? I don't want to go down this road. Being a disciple, being a Christian is a hard work. And the truth is, it is. Remember what Jesus told his disciples. Foxes have dens, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus knew it would be a hard road. Jesus told his disciples that would be a hard road. And Paul understood clearly and fully that serving Jesus was not always easy, but it was always worth it. All right, the last verses we're going to look at. We're still in Philippians chapter 4, but go up just a little bit. Go up to verse 4. So before Paul writes what we just uh, talked about, go to verse 4, beginning this chapter. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We need to know that right now. No matter what we're going through, no matter the uncertainty that we're facing, no matter the situations we're going through. Maybe we're questioning our faith. Maybe we're questioning, is God in control? Can he hear me? Is he watching what's happening right now? We need to understand that it is with him, him holding on to us, not us holding on to him, but him holding on to us in the storm that we can survive. And we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding because he is enough. We can have the sufficiency of Christ. Church, listen, if I'm honest with you, everyone struggles with being content. We all want more. 
You know, several years ago in ministry, I, I had a lot of friends. They were going through different things and, 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 and kind of different places in their ministry and lives. And I remember a, a dear, dear friend told me, he said, listen, he said, wherever God calls you to serve, wherever God places you, the devil wants you to be uncomfortable. The devil wants you looking down the road. The devil wants you to focus on anything except where you're called to be. So when God calls you somewhere, don't think about the next step. Don't think about the past all the time. You serve where you are. Grow where you were planted. And that's beautiful advice. God has you where you are for a reason. If you're a student, and God wants you to shine bright to those your age. God wants you to show the fingerprints of Jesus on your lives. The way we do that is by talking different, acting different, and by showing Jesus in a real way. If you're an adult, that means showing Jesus in your workplace, showing Jesus in your family, showing Jesus to your kids. The truth is we are all called as Christians to be Christ-like. And we're called to be content. Go back to Exodus chapter 20. Go back to the Ten Commandments. If we are coveting, if we are so busy saying, man, God, if I had what my neighbor had, if I had his house, his boat, his kids, if I had his spouse, I would be happy. You know what you're doing? You're being ungrateful and you're not growing where you're planted. And man, Satan is robbing you of every joy that God is trying to give you. The truth is what we need to do is we need to say, you know what, God, here's what I'm thankful for. Look at what Paul said right here. Rejoice, rejoice. Tell God, petition, tell him what you're thankful for. Is your life perfect? No. Is my life perfect? No. But I have such a long list of things that I don't deserve that God blessed me with. Things that I can never earn based upon my actions. And yet God has blessed me beyond measure. And if I have the right heart, if I'm thankful for that, man, God can use that in powerful ways. I have to understand the sufficiency of Christ. So here's my challenge for you. My challenge for you is to think about your own life. What are you thankful for? Don't think about what you don't have. Don't think about, you know, all the things that you wish you had. But think about what God has blessed you with. And say, Lord, thank you. With a heart of thanksgiving. And maybe you're in a hard time. And maybe like Paul, it doesn't look very good. But can you say, Philippians 4, 13, Lord, I can do all things through you who give me strength. And the only way we can say that is if we understand what contentment is. If we can look in our lives in the hard times and say, Lord, I'm content. It's not always beautiful. Sometimes life stinks. But I am content because you're enough. If we can say that, then Jesus can do beautiful things in our lives. The song reference uh, for today is Matt Marr is one of my favorite Christian artists. I mean, if you've never heard of his music, check it out. He is top five easily. But Matt Marr has a song called Lord, I Need You. Lord, I come, I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. We need to realize that what we need more than anything, more than a new house, more than a new vehicle, more than perfect kids, more than a perfect spouse, we need 
Jesus. Because if we're focused on Jesus' church, we can find contentment. And then God can really use us. If we understand the sufficiency of Christ, and if we can honestly say Jesus is enough, that's the secret of contentment. Understanding how much Jesus is to us. No matter the age, no matter where you are in your life, I pray that you take a moment privately and you say, Lord, help me. Father, let's, let's look at this. Thank you for, for watching. Um, please go to YouTube. Uh, just search First Baptist Church Calico Rock. Our entire library is on there. Um, all kinds of videos, including today. Like I said, we had a really, really good program today. Brother Kevin Bishop is continuing his sermon series in First Peter. It is a great sermon series. I challenge you to watch it. This was his third message. We interviewed two of our students, Anna Kirby and Joseph Grigg. They did a wonderful job. Uh, great special by Marissa Killian. Just so much good stuff. I'll challenge you to watch it, and of course, these videos as well. We'll be back Wednesday at 7 p.m. to continue. Let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, Father, even though this is a trying time for so many of us, Lord, Father, even though there are so many things that, Father, we can honestly say, Lord, that, that are hard, it's so important to understand that you are enough. Father, Lord, that we, we need you so deeply. Father, we need you so intimately, Lord, so powerfully. Father, help us to understand that we don't just need more stuff. Or we don't need a person to fix us. Lord, we need your grace. We need your mercy. And Lord, most importantly, we need your love. Lord, help us understand that instead of running to other things or other people, we need to run to you. Father, to find contentment in this world, we need to find the sufficiency in Christ. Lord, thank you. Father, be with us now in your name. Amen. Y'all have a good evening.